Hey, what's up everyone? I hope everyone's doing well. I wanna make this a concise video about why security is very important in cryptocurrency and that you need to take it seriously now. And ideally, if say you're in hacks, things like this, ideally you take it seriously before you do a stake, things like that. And you take it seriously when you're setting up MetaMask and your hardware wallet and things like that, because it's only as good as what you did when you set it up. So if you had things, uh, say when your MetaMask, you were setting it up on the, the 12 word seed phrase and you're writing it down, say if you took a photo, things like that, you're gonna be compromised. And then if you did a stake on that wallet as well, uh, you know, you're know you pretty much screwed until that stake ends. And so we're gonna get into a little bit about it. And once again, why it's so important because a lot of people and myself included, when, when I first got into crypto, Luckily, I had I had taken the advice of other people and did get a hardware wallet and ended up going with the Trezor. But they were saying that, hey, you know, the Trezor itself is maybe 50, 60 bucks, whatever it is. And, um, you know, if you have, say, I don't know, 500 or a thousand dollars at like a, at a minimum, then, yeah, you're going to want to have that proper hardware that is cold storage. So let's just get right into it. OK, so once again, why it's important. Most people think, oh, you know, this is just a hundred dollars of hex. Uh, I mean, I don't really need to take my security that seriously. You know, it's not like it's going to go to a million dollars or anything. And then we see in under two years from January 5th to the most recent all time high, Hex would have made a million dollars from a hundred dollar principal. And that doesn't include the staking. That's just completely liquid. All right. So MetaMask, let's get into, let's get right into it. Okay. So MetaMask.io, this is the like interface and the wallet interface that you need to interact with go.hex.com, which is the front end for the staking and all of that for the, the hex stakes. Okay, so you're gonna go to metamask.io and I don't want you to type that in to Google or any search engine. I want you to type it in the URL because what we see is crypto itself the, the whole space in general is like the wild, wild west. And people will take any opportunity that they can to not only get your seed phrase, but to try and uh, lure you in to, uh, you know, thinking that you're being helped, but in reality, you're like screwing yourself over and you're giving someone the access to your money. And then we see it happen every single day, not only in Hex, but in these other uh, cryptos where you know, people thought that they were being helped by some sort of tech support and then lo and behold, all of their coins and their money is gone. So to prevent that from happening, go to metamask.io. You're going to install the wallet itself. It's, a, uh, it's an extension. So whether you got Chrome, Firefox, Brave, et cetera, you're going to download the extension. And then once the actual extension uh, is finished downloading, you're going to run it and you're going to set up a new wallet. And ideally, what you're going to do in the future is have a, uh, a hardware wallet as well that all of your stakes go on and you want your hardware wallet to actually have uh, you want your hacks to be contained in the hardware wallet and not the metamask wallet that you had set up so what we're going to get into is when you're setting up the metamask wallet it's got a 12 word seed phrase and this is the complete access to that wallet's money whoever has control of that can literally drain all the funds, whatever is there, it's pretty much their wallet if they have those 12 words. So it's very important that when you do set that up, that you write it down on a piece of paper and that you never have it ever touch the internet or anything digital. You want it all to be analog, get it on a piece of paper, and then you know maybe you could laminate the piece of paper, things like that. But once again, ideally, you're not using that MetaMask wallet that you just set up you're not using that for the stakes. You're using that as a proxy to use your hardware wallet that use that that has the stakes. Okay, so that's kind of how you do the actual MetaMask, uh, you know, seed phrase. So you're going to write those twelve words down, and then the next step in security, the importance is a, a hardware wallet. And why is this important? So we call it a hardware wallet or a cold storage. What it pretty much does is it it keeps the actual uh, cryptocurrency that you have like off offline, off the internet. It It's via like a USB. So 
I've got an extra one actually right here that I'm setting up for someone. But so this is kind of what the, uh, you know, what the treasure looks like. I'll be giving that to them in the next day or so. Um, but so that's what it looks like. And pretty much all of your crypto, you know, is contained in this hardware wallet itself. And it never actually touches and interfaces with the, uh, you know, internet and things like that, like a hot wallet would do. Uh, a lot of exchanges, they have, you know, primary amount of their holdings and their, their mass amount of wealth in things like this, which is cold storage. And it never touches, you know, a hot wallet or things like that, unless they need to make some changes or, you know, transfer some liquidity and funds. All right. So yeah, the, the hardware wallet is very important because I see a lot of people that make mistakes when they're setting up their, their MetaMask. And, you know, if you can have something that is like you're your own sovereign citizen of that wealth, like you are your own bank, then for me, I want a damn bank vault. I want a bank vault with, you know, multiple different vaults and doors before the actual goods are uh, able to be breached in. You, you want as many different, you know, points of security, like I mentioned, to, uh, to prevent from being attacked and things like that. Okay, so the hardware wallet's very important. We'll get into that right here. And also for, for everyone that knows, uh, I will be making, <clears throat> I will be uh, editing the clip after this, but Papa B, he's a longtime hexagon. OG, really knowledgeable about security. He's got a very, uh, you know, uh, experienced security background and he knows what the hell he's doing. So he's really good on the hardware wallet themselves, kind of an explanation why you know, why the treasure might be a better option and probably is than maybe a ledger, things like this, and uh, kind of goes into more of the nuance. So I will be posting that after this, but I wanted to get this video done because I was listening to another stream and same thing, you know, people are, they're not taking their security seriously or they, uh, they, they have such fear of mis missing out that instead of taking their security seriously today, they just say, screw it, I just want, I want to buy the coins, I want to stake the coins. And then they end up making, you know, mistakes that can be very costly down the road. Because once again, hey, it was just a hundred dollar principle. But when that turns into a million dollars in the future, and then it gets compromised, or you you don't have, uh, you know, the access to it, things like that, you're going to be really kicking yourself uh, that you didn't, you know, spend those few minutes to do the research ahead of time. Okay, so this is the treasure. Once again, this is what I, uh, this is what I showed you for, uh, for a friend that I'm helping set up the treasure. And uh, so this is what it looks like. This is the, uh, the treasure one. And then they've got the Model T as well that uh, it's, it's not that much different. It's, it's a little bit more expensive and it's just got a bigger screen and like a, a touchpad versus, versus this treasure which just has, let me get into it real quick, which just has uh, two buttons, you know? So literally just one button and the other button, one of them's to confirm, one of them's to, you know, not confirm things like that. So that's kind of how you interact with the Trezor. But so this is the website and let me actually change the, uh, one second here, let me change that metamask.io to treasure.io, okay? And we're gonna save that and put that as the name, okay? So treasure.io is where you can go to get one of these hardware wallets. Once again, there's options of Ledger, there's these other different uh, hardware wallets, but from my experience of being in crypto since March, 2017, I got a hardware wallet like a week after getting into crypto. And this has always been the easiest experience for me. And not only easy, cause that's cool if it's easy, but if it's not secure, then it's not important, right? Uh, then it doesn't matter. But so it's the easiest experience for the user. And it's also got a very high level of security. And it's just got some really cool options as well that, you know, some of the other uh, competitors don't have. Some of them, some of the hardware wallets, they uh, engage via like Bluetooth or some of the, the ledgers have a, uh, like a, a battery and like the batteries can die. So the, uh, the hardware wallet for the Trezor I've, uh, I've never had any problems with it and I, I recommend it to people that, uh, you know, they should take a look at it and do their own research themselves, obviously, but it's a very good option and we'll get into it now, okay? So once again, trezor.io, T-R-E-Z-O-R.io. And it, it's able to hold a lot of different coins. 
But for me, anymore, I don't trade. I don't really speculate much on, on anything else. I've got a little bit of Ethereum for gas transactions, you know, just for gas to do the transactions. And then I just have Hex and then I've sacrificed for Pulse. Um, so here's what you can do. You can, you know, you can connect to the wallet, all that things uh, on this website, but there's also a, a application itself, which is more secure. It's like the Trezor suite, I believe. So that's where you can actually uh, set up the Trezor and where you can kind of do those things. But we're just going to say, hey, that we don't have a Trezor and kind of how do you get one? All right. So click go to Trezor. And another thing that's uh, that's important, right, is, you know, sure, you can get a Trezor, a Ledger, whatever else, uh, whatever other hardware wallet on, uh, on like Amazon, things like that. But the reason that it's not uh, ideal and then it's not recommended is because in Papa B, once again, he's a really good resource for this. And I learned from him last night because like, okay, that totally makes sense. And everyone's been talking about this in the first place. But the reason you would want to get it from say, the, the, the seller itself, the Trezor.io website versus say Amazon, and, and have it being like a verified seller is that you don't want to bring, sorry, you don't want to break the chain of custody. You just want the, you know, the hard, hardware manufacturer and then you want them to ship it to your house. You don't want it to be the hardware manufacturer that then sends it to Amazon, which is fulfilled by Amazon. And then possibly there being some, you know, shenanigans going on that could, you know, go to the user. So instead of it just being direct to the consumer, now you've got a middleman, which is the Amazon. So I think that was a really good uh, lesson that I had, you know, gotten more information from on uh, on Papa B. So it's good to know why you want to do these things, just to have your security be, you know, like a Fort Knox. All right. So let's get back to it. So let me go to the screen. So once again, there's a Trezor one. This is the original, and then there's the Model T. Honestly, there's not much of a difference. I mentioned that the Trezor one has those two buttons, as I showed you. Trezor Model T has a uh, full color touch screen. I mean, honestly, with the the cost itself, I mean, it just it kind of just makes sense to go with the Trezor one, in my opinion. You don't really need much more than that if you're you know hexagon staking things like that. So you can click uh, get your Trezor one, and then uh, so yeah, we can see this is sixty three dollars or fifty three euros. So pretty much that's how you can kind of order it. Okay. And then we're gonna we're gonna stop right there, and then go back to uh, a couple other points that I have. So as I mentioned earlier, you never want to make a digital copy, a photo, anything like that of the seed phrase because the second that it touches the internet, just like a hot wallet, uh, compared to that cold storage that I mentioned, the second that it's you know connected to the internet or interface and starts doing things like that, it's more susceptible to being compromised. Okay, so never screenshot it, things like that. Get a hardware wallet. Um, so another thing that you can do when you're actually setting up your Trezor or whatever hardware wallet you decide to go with, you know, feel free to do your own research and make your own decision. But another thing of uh, security that you can do is engrave the actual seed phrase itself, which is a 24 word, you know, it's, it's cryptography uh, produced, right? It's a very secure seed phrase itself that allows the access to your funds things like this, um, but it would be very highly recommended that you don't just write it on a piece of paper, right? Because if you just have a, you know, if you just have a, you know, just piece of mail, a, a piece of paper, right? This could get wet, this could get burned, it could get lost, stolen very easily. And if you have something that's more secure than just that substrate, a piece of paper, then you're probably gonna be in better hands if something did go wrong, okay? So once again, what Papa B recommends, and I uh, took this advice from him, was you can get a like a engraver, right? And you can actually engrave the seed phrase into something like this. And this is the exact thing that he's recommended. So this is titanium. It's It came from like Israel. I think it was like 15 pieces of this for a really, really inexpensive price. But once again, the reason that this is cool and the reason that you'll probably want to do this if you're actually taking your security seriously is because, hey, if this gets wet, who gives a damn, right? If you are actually engraving it deep enough, you wanna make sure that when you're doing it, the speed is high, that you're taking your time to make sure it's legible, 
and that it's deep. But if you're doing that, then hey, say if there's a fire, this is you know fire resistant uh, up until a very high amount of degrees. So this is going to be a lot more uh, you know a lot more secure and safe, and have a better chance of remaining after a house fire than say that you know flimsy piece of paper that's just going to you know disappear with all of the other smoke and the dust. Okay, so that's something you can do. Uh, highly recommended, and thanks to Papa B for for recommending that. Okay. What else do I want to say? So engrave the hardware wallet. Um, another thing that's just kind of common sense, common practice, but common sense ain't common, right? So you got to tell the people is just treat this seriously. I mean, we've never really had that opportunity where, hey, you can be your own bank and and people think it's cool to like flaunt their wealth and, and show their wealth and things like that. But it might be cool in your perception when you're just talking to your friend but especially if you're doing that online on social medias and things like that, you're literally just asking to either get robbed, to get hacked, you know, a number of things that could, you know, now risk what you were flaunting and now not have that possession of that anymore because someone saw that you were a perfect target for them to attack. Okay. So I never recommend that people say how much crypto they have, say where their seed phrase is, where, where their hardware wallets are. That's very, very stupid and uh, it's it's not recommended. We see it all the time where people got robbed, people got hacked, things like that, and it's a tragedy. So learn from someone else's mistake that was very tragic and try not to have that happen to you because it's not a fun experience, okay? So there's a couple of ways that you can actually separate your seed phrase. Um, as I mentioned, the MetaMask itself has a 12 word seed phrase and then you need all 12 words in order for it to uh, access. And then the hardware wallet does 24. You can do um, different like seed phrase strategies where you break it up into like two thirds. And then one of them, like you can kind of interchange those, those 24 words into like different sections where even if someone did, you know, rob you or wrench attack, things like that, you know, maybe they only got one third or two thirds of the actual seed phrase and not the rest of the seed phrase that would then unlock it, okay? So that's something to consider. It's called the uh, Shamir secret sharing. Uh, so take a look at that, kind of hard to spell, but anyways, that's that's a method that you can do. Um, some other people have done like rhymes or ciphers where it looks like just a piece of writing or a poem type deal, but in reality, you can kind of decipher it and it's got the seed phrase within itself. You know, there's a number of different things that you can do um, even even with this steel, or sorry, with this titanium. But uh, another thing that's important as well, right? Say if uh, say if you died and you were a Bitcoin millionaire or a billionaire, and you were the only one that knew how to access that. Well, if no one else knows how to access it and it's already secure in the first place, it's not going to get hacked or stolen. Then you're pretty much SOL because now nobody can recover those funds when you're dead. Uh, it's an important thing to consider that hey. You know, do I have someone that I can trust where, you know, if I were to die uh, in the future, that those funds that I worked so hard to earn and to acquire, that those funds could actually go to your family members and not just be lost in limbo forever. Because we see that once again, with a lot of uh, o old OG Bitcoiners, some of them died, they never shared it with their spouse, things like that. The spouse had no idea. And now the spouse has no idea how to recover such a thing. So you can uh, definitely consider that, right? Because um, no one knows when uh, when that time is gonna be and how tragic if uh, if the funds were dormant when it could literally be helping your loved ones, your family, et cetera. All right, so that's something to consider. Another thing about the seed phrase is, as I mentioned, uh, it's important to have a backup. It's important to have you know, countermeasures in case there is a fire, in case there is a flood, et cetera. And so I don't recommend that you, I mean, that you're storing it at your house and things like this because once again you're literally just welcoming and you know asking and inviting someone to come to your house find out where you live and then rob you at gunpoint and uh and take the actual you know steel plate or the seed phrase uh, hardware wallet things like that so there's a number of different ways that you can actually uh, do that i've heard some people doing security boxes some people you know giving a third of each seed phrase to you know different trusted family members, et cetera. Uh, just, just at least take it into consideration 
that, hey, it might be an option and people have done it in the past. You can always tweak the things and change the things how you want to, but um, at least just consider it and then make your own choice. Uh, so what I wanted to say is don't memorize your seed phrase. Once again, if you are flaunting that, hey, you know, I got my you know 24 word seed phrase memorized and you know, I don't have to disclose when I'm traveling across the country or states that I've got more than 10,000 because guess what? I've got it all in my head. Things like that are also not important or not uh, very smart because, you know, you're you're betting that decision on how your health is today. But what if you get in a car crash? What if you die and you're the only one that had it memorized? Uh, things like that. Or what if you have some sort of medical condition where now now you have that memory lost and now you can't access your keys and your seed phrase that you thought you were so smart by memorizing and that was your only stance of uh, of security so take the countermeasures take it uh take the security seriously now because especially with things like hex.com and uh you're gonna have people locking their hex longer than we've seen bitcoin be around and so the security itself right now is pretty secure, but you want to make sure you're doing everything you can today, especially for those stakes many years down the road, things like that, because uh, as the future goes on, uh, people are going to you know, become more advanced and, and find different ways to uh, try and you know, get your seed phrase or uh, get to your actual coins and your keys. Uh, so you want to be able to not only live for those longer stakes and to be able to realize them. But uh, yeah, you wanna be able to realize them because it's gonna be a lot of interest and gains. You wouldn't want someone else to uh, have that pleasure because you did something stupid by uh, taking you know, um, a few less minutes at the beginning and just rushing into the stakes, okay? So that's pretty much it. Uh, once again, take, it, take that security seriously now. We saw $100 go into a million dollars, not including staking. And this really is your responsibility. You are your own bank. And it's something that comes with the territory of the mad gains and the massive gains and having that, you know, peer to peer decentralized uh, crypto. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. And uh, I hope everyone does take this to heart and that you take it seriously because I see a lot of people every single day. I just saw it last night in the Pulse Chain Com Telegram chat. Or same thing, you know, oh, I was contacted by MetaMask uh, support or this sort of support, treasure support. And, uh, you know, now I can't find my, my coins. They're not there. And uh, it happens every single day. So do the, do the knowledge now. Take the time now. And even if you're onboarding someone, you're onboarding your loved one, uh, teach them how to take their security seriously too. Because how bad would you feel if you onboarded someone and... They happen to do something that compromised their their coins. They didn't have their coins anymore. Well, guess what? Now that kind of burden of proof is, or like just that burden in general is like on you. And now that looks really bad on you for uh, not taking three or five more minutes to teach them why you'd want to spend the money on a hardware wallet. Because uh, we saw that the, the Trezor itself on the website uh, on Trezor.io was like 63 bucks and I think you can actually buy like bundles of them. You can buy like a two pack, three pack, et cetera. And it's a little bit less expensive when you buy it in the bundle versus just solo. But um, if, you, if you had less than $100 and you put that into a hardware wallet, now you know that that other $100 that's now a million in, in this example, now you know that it's secure and that you can actually like go to sleep at night and not have to wonder like, did I do anything wrong? Did I miss any steps? Like. Am I possibly compromised? Um, the, the very last thing I'll say is, I mentioned don't, uh, don't put it ever in the digital form. Um, things like your phone, they can have a, uh, not an accelerometer, but they can have things that, that can monitor your keystrokes and key loggers and, and different sounds that can, can literally uh, decipher what the words are of your seed phrase. Same thing with, uh, with screen sharing you know, loggers as well. Um, so you never want to, that, that's kind of like the thing with MetaMask, right? When, you, uh, when you're actually entering in your seed phrase from a wallet that's already set up to a new wallet, uh, a new account, now you're typing those words in again. And if you have a key logger on your computer that you don't know about, now that person has all 12 words 
And since it wasn't secured by say a hardware wallet that would have had like an extra layer of security, now that person that has the key logger can literally just access all your funds and you would have never known what the hell was going on because you had no idea that your computer had a, a key logger and things like that. So don't, uh, don't ever speak those seed phrases out loud. Never do it on the phone, anything like that. Uh, even, even when you're actually writing it down, don't whisper it, don't do things like that, you know, or write it down, don't say it out loud because uh, things like your phone, things like the computer, things like uh, an Amazon Echo, Alexa, those things could, uh, could, could be a, a risk vector for, for being attacked and being compromised. So that's it. This is almost a 30 minute video, but the security itself is important. You know, even if you have $100, treat that like it is a million dollars because it only took two years for the hexagons to have that happen. And, uh, you know, just uh, don't underestimate what people are willing to do to get this kind of fund. And especially when they know that it's not insured, especially when they know that, hey, there is no bank vault to break into. There's just the person, $5 rent attack, things like that. So just take your security seriously now and plan, you know, when you're setting it up, plan for all of those events to happen. And then how would you mitigate not actually losing your coins and your crypto if those events did happen? So that's all I have. I hope everyone takes this seriously and uh, I'll see everyone later. Thank you.